Number one, Contra. Also known as Grizor. Grizor? Really? Anyway, also known as Grizor in Europe. This game was developed by Konami in 1987 as a coin-operated side-scrolling shoot-em-up arcade game. This run-and-gun action co-op game stars Bill Riser and Lance Bean. Lance Bean? As soldiers of an elite unit called Contra that specializes in guerrilla warfare as they are sent in to destroy the Red Falcon organization and stop an alien entity that has taken control of the enemy forces. Number 2. Aladdin 3. Also known as the hacked version of Magic Carpet, this game was created by developer Megasoft for the Famicom and the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's a standard side-scrolling shooter that follows a genie-like character on a flying carpet through levels of enemy birds, bees, and people in hoods on rockets that shoot projectiles. Backgrounds range from sand dunes and Arabian-style settings to outer space. That's pretty much it. You fly right, dodge projectiles, and shoot at enemies with bosses at the end of each of its four levels. Number 3. World Soccer. Also known as just Soccer, this game was developed by Intelligent Systems and Nintendo. It was released in the United States and Japan in 1985. The player could choose between seven different teams, the United States, Great Britain, France, West Germany, Brazil, Japan, and Spain, with a choice of five different skill levels and either 15, 30, or 45 minute halves, there's not much else to this game. It's slow, it's boring, it's soccer. Number 4, King of Fighter. Really known by its true name, Yi R Kung Fu. I hope I said that right, or 1-2 Kung Fu, is a Konami game made in 1985 about a fighter who must defeat a handful of martial arts masters to win the title of Grandmaster and honor the memory of his father. In the arcade version, the name of the protagonist was Oolong, but in the Nintendo Entertainment System version, they changed it to Lee, possibly due to the cash-in on the popularity of the well-known martial artist and actor Bruce Lee. This game is known to be one of the earliest influences to modern fighting games. Number 5, Tekken. Also known as Karateka, the creators of the Dr. Boy obviously had taken some liberties with the names of the games they ripped off. Anyway, Karateka was created by Jordan Mechner while attending Yale University. This side-scrolling beat-em-up is about an unnamed martial artist that must rescue a princess named Mariko from an evil overlord, Akuma's Castle. Originally programmed for the Apple II, then ported by the company Broderbund, Broderbund, whatever, for North American console releases, along with ER Kung Fu, I really still hope I'm saying that right, it established what all modern fighting games have derived from. Number 6, WWF. Actually, this game is Tag Team Match Muscle, made in 1985, which was based off of characters from a manga and anime series called Kini Kuman. This wrestling game featured eight characters to choose from. Kini Kuman, Terryman, Ramen Man, Robin Mask, Buffalo Man, Wars Man, Ashura Man, and Geronimo. Exclusive to the Japanese version, you could choose a character called Brocken Jr., a German Nazi. I can see why they took the character out for our Northern American releases. In the game select screen, you can pick up to two characters and are allowed to swap between them during the match, and each character has their own finishing moves, but they all share the same basic attacks. Number 7, Tetris 2. This is actually the version of the original Tetris game from Tengen, back in 
back in 1988, Alexei Pajitnov, along with Dmitry Pavlovsky and Badim Garasimov, I hope I got those names right, created the two-player puzzle game with falling shapes that fit together and disappeared when a full horizontal line across the playing field was created. Multiple distribution companies scrambled to purchase the rights to distribute the game and wound up creating a huge international problem that led to a court battle which eventually ended up having Tengen ordered to destroy their entire stock of the game as Nintendo won the rights. 260,000 plus copies were destroyed, but somewhere around 100,000 have already been shipped out, making this game kind of rare. Nintendo created the version that is most known today as the single-player puzzle game and is seen as vastly inferior to the Tengen version, which is a lot closer to the original. Number 8. Super Mario the full title being Super Mario Bros., this game is held as one of the greatest video games ever created and possibly single-handedly responsible for reviving the gaming industry after the video game crash of the 1980s. The story of this game is a strange one, even in its simplest form. Starring the Plumber Brother duo named Mario and Luigi that now reside in a place called the Mushroom Kingdom, a landscape of brick roads, castles, and question mark boxes filled with psychedelic drugs suspended in the sky, they travel this world beating the shit out of turtles and dickheaded shaped fungus, jumping over pitfalls and diving through pipes in search of a princess strangely named Toadstool that is being held captive by what looks like Gamera's younger punk rock loving cousin Bowser, a fire breathing dragon with a spiked turtle shell on its back. Number 9, Arkonoid. You take the game Pawn, turn it vertically, replace the second player with a brick wall, and you have Arkonoid with an A. The player controls a horizontal moving paddle and must keep a ball bouncing back and forward against the wall, chipping away at its bricks. The goal to a game like this is easy to understand. Either break all the bricks or make it through to a goal on the other side. But the game can get challenging at times, especially on the later levels, with its different shaped walls, the various power-ups like multi-ball, speed settings, and the patterns in which the ball can bounce. It's a basic game like Tetris, but it's a classic that seems to know what makes games fun without going overboard with graphics and story. Number 10, 1942. The only game to have a correct title on this knockoff since Contra in 1942 is a vertical scrolling arcade shooter made by Capcom in 1984, where you pilot a plane into enemy territory during World War II as you are in charge of a mission to destroy the entire Japanese air fleet. However, this port is nothing but a squealy mess of a game that sounds like somebody teabagging a controller on composer mode in Mario Paint. And this stolen port is as horrible as it gets with its glitchy low frame rate and completely unreadable text. Number 11, Star Force. The vertical space shooter known as Megaforce at the arcades by Tekken in 1984, later known as Tecmo, the name of the game was switched to Star Force in 1985 by Hudson Soft when they ported it to the family computer and the MSX, despite the arcade version still being called Megaforce. Number 12, F1 Race. Distributed on the family computer and ported over to a lot of Famicom clones, this game is seen as a close ripoff of Namco's pole position for the Atari. The player controls a Formula One car with a manual two-speed transmission of low and high on ten different tracks in three difficulty levels. Making the slightest contact with another car or a marker that lines the track results in your car exploding in a ball of fire and setting you back several seconds in the race. Number 13, Popeye. 
Developed by Nintendo in 1983, the King Features Syndicate character Popeye was given his own arcade game similar to a Donkey Kong style platformer, which so happens that the characters from Popeye were to be used in Donkey Kong years earlier, but Nintendo couldn't license them. How the game works is Popeye must collect items dropped by olive oil at the top of the screen while avoiding their other licensed characters like the Sea Hag and Brutus. Having no jump button, the game instead contain a punch feature which is used to grab cans of spinach, break bottles, skulls, and knock out vultures that attack. Number 14, Galaza. Or Galaga as the rest of the world calls it, developed and published by Namco and Midway in 1981, Galaga gives the player control of a spaceship at the bottom of the screen that can fly horizontally while intergalactic insect-like spacecraft fly in patterns and attack with missiles, collide, or capture the player's ship with a beam. Celebrated as one of the most successful games of the golden era of video games, Galaga was ported to multiple consoles and had many sequels. Number 15, Bomb Jack. This is actually the sequel to 1984's Bomb Jack, known as Mighty Bomb Jack, created by Tecmo in 1986. The character Bomb Jack is a horned helmet wearing, high jumping hero with a cape that can float in the air. His goal is to collect bombs as well as power ups from treasure chests throughout the levels that allow him to change colors and do different things, like opening treasure chests easier, changing enemies into coins, and adding seconds to your game time. Number 16, Bird Week. Created by developer Lennar for the family computer, Bird Week is a side-scroller where you have to journey out to get items and bring them back to the center of the game map while dodging obstacles and enemies along the way. The object of the game is you are a mother bird and you have to supply food to your baby chicks in order for them to grow up and leave the nest. So you must fly off and capture butterflies to feed to them, dodging enemies like moles and other birds along the way. Number 17, Five Chess. Also known as Gomoku Narabi Renju or Connect 5 was developed by Nintendo for the Famicom. The object of the game is to take turns placing down circular pieces on a board trying to get five across in any straight pattern before the other player gets five of their own. There's not much to say about this game, it's Connect 4 plus 1. Number 18, Stargate. Stargate was created for the arcades in 1981 by Eugene Jarvis and Larry DeMar and distributed by Williams Electronics as a sequel to the 1980 hit game Defender, also known as Defender 2. Stargate adds multiple new enemy ships and a new limited cloaking feature to the mechanics already in place from its predecessor. The object of the game is to destroy all the landers and protect the humanoids from being captured, but if all humanoids are killed, the entire planet explodes, leaving the player in empty space at the mercy of the lander enemies that turn into mutants. Number 19, Space E.T. No, this isn't the sequel to one of the shittiest video games in history, it's actually one of the greatest. Space Invaders, created by Tomohiro Nashikado while working at Taito and licensed by Midway for an arcade release. Space Invaders is one of the earliest shooter games with the object of the game is to destroy the rows of descending enemy ships as they approach your laser bases. If they happen to reach the bottom of the screen or destroy the last of your bases, the game is over. Number 20, Mario Brothers. The precursor to number 8 on this list, created in 1983 by Shigeru Miyamoto and Gunpai Yokoi, Mario Brothers is one of the first wraparound platformer arcade games to come out. The story involves two plumber brothers that go down into the sewers of New York and find strange creatures suddenly appearing from the pipes, and their job is to defeat all the creatures that emerge and rack up as many points as possible doing it. 
To this day, Mario, aka Jumpman, is seen as one of the greatest and most known video game characters of all time and shows no signs of ever stopping, with easily over 50 different video game titles under his belt, with most recently to this review, Super Mario Run for iOS at the tail end of 2016. Number 21, Exerion. Released by Jailco in 1983 and licensed by Taito for distribution, Exerion is a rail shooter with faux 3D background and a parallax effect that allows for inertia simulation to flying as you battlecraft on a foreign world. Unlike a lot of shooter games where the enemies fly past and are never seen again, the enemies in Exerion seem to track the player around the screen and continue to attack from any angle, giving a new challenge to the combat. Number 22, Road Fighter. The first racing game developed by Konami in 1984, Road Fighter is a top-down racing game that limits the player on fuel, but can be refilled to continue by touching special multicolored cars. If the player's car touches any other car, one of the five other types on the road, instead of instantly exploding into a ball of flames like other previous titles mentioned on this list, the car will start to spin out of control, and unless corrected, will crash and blow up on the side of the road. Number 23, Dig Dug 1. Developed and published by Namco in 1982, Dig Dug, real name Taizo Hori, is an exterminator type character with a helmet and suit, sent in to eliminate underground monsters with an manual air pump that ejects into the creature's body and inflates them via a hose until they burst. Sounds a lot like a fetish you see in DeviantArt from people with mascot outfits. Depending on how deep the monsters are in the soil, leveled by the different color patterns, what angle in which you strike, even dropping rocks on your enemies will give you bonuses of increased points. Number 24, Twin B. Created as a coin-op vertical scrolling shooter produced by Konami in 1985 about an anthropomorphic spacecraft, the setting is on a cartoonish world comprised of other anthropomorphic creatures and humans. The player controls the ship named Twinbee, which has two types of attacks, a bomb attack for ground level enemies and a bullet attack for the primary flying types. Power-ups in the form of bells can be obtained by shooting clouds, and depending on how many times you shoot the bells in the air, it will change the bonus when obtained, such as points and the new abilities for your ship. Number 25, Binary and Land. This top-down puzzle was developed by Hudson Soft in 1983, and the real title is just Binary Land. The developers of the Dr. Boy probably mistook the title of the game for the characters' names, which is actually Gurren, the blue-colored male character, and Malin, the pink-colored female character with the bow on her head. In the Famicom version, such as this one, Gurren and Malin are two penguins, but in the MSX version, they are human. The player controls both characters at the same time, mirroring each other's movements as they navigate through an obstacle course filled with spider webs and enemies like spiders and birds. In the top center of the maze is a heart boxed in a cage, which the two characters must simultaneously reach in order to unlock and complete the level. Number 26, Door Door. The first ever title published by Enix, now known as Square Enix, was created by Koichi Nakamura during a talent search contest in 1983 and developed for multiple Japanese home computers, receiving a Famicom port in 1985. The player controls a small egg-shaped character in a hat as it gets chased across platforms and down ladders by aliens. The object of the game is to trap all the aliens in doorways that you wander across, but you can only trap them from the side in which the doorway is opened, and each door can only be opened once. After the initial use, the doorway becomes unavailable. Aside from the alien enemies, bombs and nail traps appear in the player's way and become an obstacle so that a certain hallway section becomes unavailable to cross.
Number 27, Spartan X. This side-scrolling beat-em-up from Irem and distributed by Data East in 1984 was originally titled Spartan X, which was based on the Jackie Chan film Wheels on Meals, but it was changed due to the game having no similarities to the plot of the movie other than the name of the protagonist and his girlfriend, allowing Irem to change the title of the game and export it without license. The character Thomas the player controls is a kung fu master fighting hordes of enemies that grab, punch, kick, and attack with weapons, as well as having to dodge various other objects like fire-breathing dragons, moths, snakes, pots, and exploding balls. This game is fast-paced and challenging for how simple it is. Originally, the game was to reflect the 1972 movie Game of Death with Bruce Lee, as the game has five levels, matching the five stages Bruce had to fight through during the film, but it was changed to represent Jackie Chan's film during development. Number 28, Super Dynamics. The full title Super Dynamics Badminton is a Pax Softonica development and published by Vape in 1988 for the Famicom and is one of the only games based on badminton created for home consoles. Instead of it being vertical like most tennis games go, it's played horizontally. What else do you want me to say? It's fucking badminton. Shuttlecock. Number 29, Wild Gunman. In 1974, Gunpai Tokoi created an arcade game with photorealistic actors dressed as gunfighters from the Wild West against a 16mm projection screen and used a handheld device called a light gun to allow players to quick draw against their gunslinger opponents. In this version created in 1984 for the Famicom, the photorealistic images of gunfighters were changed to cartoon style video game sprites, and the mechanics of the game slightly changed as well. Instead of the photorealistic actor's eyes flashing as an indication to shoot without receiving a void for shooting too early, the gunman yells out FIRE with a speech bubble appearing over their heads. Number 30, Ninja 1. Also known as Ninja Kid, this game was introduced to the arcades and home consoles in 1984 by Jailco. The player starts off at the bottom of a stage where a bunch of enemies are perched on different levels and the player must constantly jump up and defeat them by slamming into them or tossing shurikens. Sometimes an orb will appear and if the player collects three in a row, a bonus level will be unlocked where you can collect an extra 12,000 points. Number 31, Arabian. The platformer game Arabian was designed by Sun Electronics and published by Atari in 1983, where the player plays an Arabian prince trying to rescue a princess from her palace. He battles crows and naked mole rats while jumping across the sails of a ship, crawling through caves climbing vines, and hopping across magic carpets at the palace as he collects letters to spell words and beat the level. Number 32, Helicopter. Well, at least the developers of the Doctor Boy noticed there was a helicopter in the game. Good job, because that wasn't even close to the title. The title is actually Raid on Bungling Bay. Bungling? Bugling? Bungeling? I don't know. Anyway, published by Bruderbund, or Broderbund, for the Commodore 64 in 1984 and designed by Will Wright, this overhead shooter begins with a helicopter launching from an aircraft carrier to bomb factories scattered across an island on a small planetoid controlled by the Bungling Empire, which have boats, gun turrets, fighter planes, missiles, and a battleship. If the player loses, there is no one to defeat the enemy and they are free to build a war machine and take over the planet Earth. Number 33, Donkey Kong 2. Developed in 1982 by Nintendo for the arcades, appearing in consoles later throughout the 1980s, this is actually Donkey Kong Jr., starring Donkey Kong's son as he's supposed to rescue his dad from a cage guarded by Mario. The player plays Donkey Kong Jr., having to jump platforms, climb vines, chains, and ropes to obtain keys for the cage as Mario releases enemies to attack him throughout the four stages of the game. 
Number 34, Load Runner 2. Also known as the pirated version of Championship Load Runner, which is the sequel to Load Runner that consists of far more challenging levels than the original, plus a level editor, and if the game was completed, the player could obtain a code that would be sent back to the developers and receive a certificate of completion. Released for the Apple II in 1983, the object of the game is the same as the original game, which is to collect all the gold piles. Number 35, Frontline. Released by Taito, this arcade run-and-gun shooter was made in 1982 and is one of the first games to feature ground combat and grenades. The player has to run through the countryside shooting at infantry that attack you, commandeer a tank to kill other tanks, and lob grenades into the enemy fort, causing someone to walk out with a white flag and surrender to win the level. Number 36, Antarctica. I guess that's close enough, as this game is known as Antarctic Adventures. Developed by Konami in 1983, the player must play as the penguin Penta, the Konami mascot, and must race across the Antarctic, dodging sea lions and jumping holes in the ice as you collect power-ups and bonuses from grabbing flags and fish while trying to reach different countries' radio stations. Number 37, Sky Destroyer. Released as an arcade and for the Famicom by Taito in 1985, the game is set in World War II and the player controls a monoprop fighter plane as an Imperial Japanese fighter pilot that must fight against American troops in other fighter planes, B-24 bombers, battleships, and at the end of a stage, mobile shore batteries on an island. Number 38, Balloon Fight. Created in 1984 by Nintendo for the arcades and ported over to many consoles in 1985, it's basically a ripoff of Joust. The player controls a character with balloons attached to a helmet and must flap their arms to start flying around to attack other balloon fighters by running into them and popping their balloons. The player can be killed if other fighters pop the player's balloons, get hit by lightning, or fall into the water to be eaten by piranhas. Number 39, Millipede. Developed by Atari in 1982, the sequel of the arcade classic Centipede. The object of Millipede remains the same as its predecessor, to destroy a large insect made up of multiple pieces that horizontally travels through a field of mushrooms and winds its way down to the bottom of the screen until it reaches the gray area where the player's ship resides. New enemies such as earwigs, bees, inchworms, and mosquitoes are introduced to add new features of gameplay and challenges such as slowing all enemies down for a short period or changing the direction of the millipede. Number 40, Circus Charlie. Circus Charlie is a 1984 action platformer arcade by Konami where a clown named Charlie must go through six different stages of tasks to perform. Some of the events consist of jumping through flames on the back of a lion, dodging monkeys on a high wire, and jumping across beach balls to earn points. Once the game is complete, it restarts and contains a harder difficulty level of the same stages. Number 41, Golf. A sports game from 1984 created and released by Nintendo called Golf, where you use a power accuracy bar to get the balls where you need to go on the course. That's basically it. Golf. I don't know what else you want me to say. It's golf. Number 42, Clue Clue Land. A 1984 release from Nintendo about a female balloon fish named Bubbles. The object of the game is to uncover gold ingots and use its fin to grab onto poles between the movable spaces to change direction. 
using sonar to incapacitate sea urchins and slam them into the outer walls of the level to destroy them before leaping into the warp zone in the center of the level. Number 43, Desert Tank. Known as Battle City, this tank game is a multi-directional shooter for the Famicom, created by Namco in 1985, the successor to the 1980s Tank Battalion from the same company. The player controls a tank that must destroy up to 20 tanks of four different types and defend your base through 35 maps of constantly changing terrain and obstacles like brick walls, steel barriers, ice fields, and bushes. Bonuses and power-ups are available, giving the player stronger shielding, destroying all tanks currently on the screen, and extra lives. Number 44, Combat. Designed for the arcade in 1985 by Tosi and published by Jailco, the actual name of the game is Field Combat, which consists of the player driving a blue-colored UFO-style warship against a red army with infantry, helicopters, and tanks. Weapons available to fight against the opponent are missiles to destroy their tanks, helicopters, and a tractor beam to abduct enemy troops and turn them into allies. The object of the game is to reach the far end of the field and destroy the enemy turrets around their base to enter the next level. Number 45, Baseball. One of the first titles for the Famicom, this game came out in 1983 by Nintendo. With six unlicensed teams due to being unable to gain licensing, the team still represented real teams from the Japanese Central and the American Major League from their uniform colors. The game was one of the reasons why the NES became such an overall success. Number 46, Urban Champion. Created in 1984 by Nintendo, inspired by Punch-Out!, it was Nintendo's first 2D fighting game. The object of the game is to beat up your opponent with light and heavy punches, knocking them into a sewer's manhole within the 99 second time limit. A stamina meter of 200 in the left corner of the screen lowers by 1 with every punch thrown, and lowered by 5 if a flower pot being thrown from a window smacks into the player, dazing him. To make it to the rank of champion, the player must fight 145 fights. Number 47, Macros. Also known as the Super Dimension Fortress Macros, based off the anime series of the same name, is the side-scrolling shooter about a transformable space fighter mech battling against an invading alien race of giant humanoid aliens known as the Cetrati. Released for the Famicom in 1985 by Namco. Number 48, Milk and Nuts. Created in 1983 as the first Famicom game from Hudson Soft and was the first third-party game to be released on a Nintendo console. The gameplay involves collecting fruit scattered throughout the level, avoiding obstacles, traversing the level by climbing up and down rope bridges, and dodging your rival nuts. The player will eventually gain access to Milk's fiance, Yogurt, and advance to the next of 50 levels. Number 49, Slalom. Developed by Rare in 1986, this was the first game created by Tim and Chris Stamper outside of Japan. As a single player game, Slalom's objective is to speed downhill in a series of races ranging from difficulty such as Snowy Hill for beginners, Steep Peak for intermediate, and Mountain Nasty for experts within the allotted time. Tricks for getting airborne off moguls gives the player bonus points.
Number 50, Speed Tank. Also known as Battle City and Tank 1990, it's the same game as number 43, Desert Tank, on this list. Thank you, Dr. Boy developers, for your amazing quality assurance skills. Number 51, Elevator. A Tato Corporation arcade game from 1983 called Elevator Action. The game involves the player assuming the identity of Agent 17, a spy codenamed Otto, infiltrating a multi-level building to obtain secret documents behind marked doors. Having to use the elevator by entering inside and pressing up or down to move from floor to floor, enemy agents will appear, trying to stop the player from his goal. After obtaining the secret documents, the player must escape through the basement and drive away in the car waiting at the end of the level. Number 52, Brush Roll. Also known as Crush Roller in Japan and make tracks here in the States, this is a 1981 arcade game developed by Alpha Denshi and produced by Coral Samno in Japan, later licensed by Williams in North America. Make Tracks is a maze game similar to Pac-Man, except instead of gobbling up balls, the player is pushing a paintbrush, and the goal is to cover the entire surface of the maze floor with a coat of paint while being chased by fish. Number 53, Ice Climber. A vertical platformer created for the Famicom in 1985 by Nintendo, Ice Climber stars the parka-wearing playable characters Popo and Nana as they chip away ice and jump platforms to recover stolen vegetables from a giant condor. Cracking ice ceilings with a wooden mallet, leaping onto clouds as they pass by, and making their way through enemies like seals, birds, and yetis, the player must make it to the top and grab the condor before the time runs out. Number 54, Hogan's Alley. One of the first games to use the light gun and a launch title for the Nintendo Entertainment System, this 1984 game created by Nintendo sends the player to a famous shooting range on the grounds of the Special Police School at Camp Perry where they can shoot at cardboard targets of innocents, law enforcement, and criminals. Shooting at an innocent or law enforcement officer results in costing the player one life. Number 55, Burger Time. I have no idea how the hell the people at Pretendo thought this was Burger Time because this has absolutely nothing to do with that game. The visuals, the gameplay, nothing. This game is actually Warp Man from 1985, which was the sequel to Warp Warp that was created by Namco in 1981, where the player controls a character that kills monsters named Burro Burros. The object of the game is to clear out the level of enemies and advance to the next stage. Number 56, Pac-Man. This is not Pac-Man. This isn't even close to Pac-Man. Thank you again, Protendo. This game is actually a clone from the Namco arcade game Mappy from 1983, distributed by Midway, which will be reviewed later in this video, so this is getting skipped. Number 57, Zippy Race. Also known as Moto Race USA, this game was released in the arcades by iRIM in 1983. The player must race his motorbike from Los Angeles to New York while avoiding cars through five different stages on pavement and dirt roads. 
crashing into the edge of the road, other vehicles, bushes, and rocks results in the motorcycle stopping and losing a bit of fuel, and once you run out of gas completely, the game is over. The player gets bonus points for doing wheelies and jumps. Number 58, Calculator. Released in Japan as Donkey Kong Jr. Math by Nintendo in 1983 for the Famicom, this is the only game under the education series of NES games in North America to be released. The game involves Donkey Kong Jr. trying to solve problems by adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing numbers by climbing ropes to grab them in order to match the answer Donkey Kong is holding up at the top of the screen. Number 59, Clay Shooting. Known as Game C in the NES system release titled Duck Hunt, which will be reviewed later in this video, Gunpai Yokoi and Masayuki Yumura designed a game using the light gun in first person where the player has to shoot a pair of clay pigeons that are flung into the distance. It doesn't really have much else to do other than wait, release, shoot, and repeat. Number 60, Toy Story. This is just a double of Circus Charlie for number 40. Skip. Number 61, Tennis. Released in 1984 for the Famicom and released as a launch title for the NES in North America in 1985 as part of their sports game library. There's not really much to tell about this game, it's just tennis. If you've never seen tennis before, that's okay, it's just tennis. Number 62, Pinball. Developed by Nintendo in 1984 and released as a launch title for the NES in 1985, Pinball is a game where the player controls the flippers of a pinball machine with multiple tables and bonus modes. Launching the small steel ball from the plunger sends it to the top of the table where the bumpers, switchers, and first set of flippers to smack the ball around are. Number 63, Lunar Ball. Also known as Lunar Pool, this game is a pool game simulation. Created by Compile for the NES and MSX, each stage is a differently shaped table. The object of the game is to hit the cue ball using the pool stick at the colored balls and have them fall into one of the six pockets around the table. There are 60 levels to play on with adjustable friction. Number 64, Monkey. This is actually a really warped, techno-acid trip looking version of Donkey Kong Jr., which was already reviewed as number 33 on this video. Number 65, Squoon. Developed for the NES by Home Data and published by iRem in 1986, Squoon is an underwater side-scrolling shooter about aliens from Neptune having run out of food and decided to invade Earth to eat humans, so they've melted the polar ice caps, causing the Earth's continents to sink under the ocean. The player controls a pink submarine named Squoon that has to destroy alien craft with missiles while throwing ice ball bombs at underwater facilities to rescue human survivors. Number 66, 
number 66, Puyan. Manufactured by Stern Electronics and are licensed from Konami in 1982 as an arcade, the player assumes the role of a mother pig, and the object of the game is to rescue her piglets by shooting arrows and meat at balloon-riding wolves from a basket before they reach the bottom of the cliff. Number 67, Joust. Developed in 1982 as an arcade game by Williams Electronics, Joust was one of the most successful co-op games at that date. With the player becoming a yellow knight on a flying ostrich in a third-person perspective, the object of the game is to defeat the waves of enemy knights riding buzzards by being higher than the enemy and slamming into them while flying over a pit of lava and dumping them in. Number 68, Duck Hunt. Released by Nintendo in 1984 for the Famicom in Japan, Duck Hunt was a release title for the NES in the United States in 1985. One of the most known games to be used with the NES Zapper, the player starts off in first person as the hunter. The game begins when you send your dog out to go scare ducks from hiding in the reeds for you to shoot them out of the sky. As an added bit of entertainment, the second player can control the movement of the ducks. Number 69, Gyrodyne. Developed by Crux and manufactured by Taito in 1984, Gyrodyne is a vertical scrolling shooter where the player controls a helicopter type aircraft with three weapon usages available. A weapon that fires a pair of bullets, a machine gun that fires at the ground, and if both buttons are pressed, the Gyrodyne shoots missiles. The gameplay is similar to games like 1942 and Xevious, as you have to destroy the enemy swarms and make it to the boss at the end of the level. Number 70, Excite Bike. A launch title for the NES in 1985, Excite Bike came out to the Famicom in 1984. The player takes control of a red race bike and can compete in solo races against time or against computer assisted racers as they race around a track to qualify for the Excite Bike, the championship race, by coming in third or above in the preliminaries. There are two forms of acceleration to this bike, the A button for normal speed and the B button for full acceleration. There is also a course creator that allows you to make up your own tracks. Number 71, Formation Z. Released in the arcades in 1984 by Jalilco, Formation Z, also known as Aeroboto in Japan, is a side-scrolling shooter that was distributed by Williams. With limited fuel, the objective is to avoid obstacles and destroy any on-screen enemies to get to the end of the level. Number 72, Painter. This was already reviewed as Brush Roll from number 52. Number 73, Mappy. An arcade game by Namco introduced in 1983 by Midway, Mappy is a side-scrolling platformer of cartoon animals, primarily cats and mice. The player controls a mouse named Mappy, derived from the Japanese slang term Mappo for policemen, looking to retrieve stolen goods in a mansion from the Meowkies, enemy cats, that have stashed the stolen items in the hallways. Mappy must dash around avoiding the Meowkies and Goro the boss cat by quickly opening and shutting doors, leaping off trampolines, popping balloons, and retrieving all of the stolen loot on each of the 256 levels.
Number 74, Bomberman. In 1983, Hudson Soft created an arcade-style, maze-based video game for multiple Japanese home computers called Bomberman, also known as Eric and the Floaters in Europe. The player controls an anthropomorphic robot named Bomberman that must find his way through 50 mazes filled with enemies in the shapes of balloons, blobs, water drops, tigers, and ghosts to find the exit in the allotted time in order to progress to the next level. Number 75, Magic Jewelry. One of the only unlicensed NES titles in this cart is the ripoff of Columns by Sega from the RCM Group in 1990, a common title pirated to Famicom carts such as the one for the Dr. Boy. The game is mechanically similar to Columns where the scores are obtained with the combination made up of three or more similar pieces of jewelry in a horizontal, vertical, or diagonal pattern. The background, which is a depiction of the Statue of Liberty appearing in the right side of the screen, is taken from the intro of Golgo 13, Top Secret Episode, a 1988 game for the NES. Number 76, Devil World. Developed and published by Nintendo for the NES in 1984, the player controls a green dragon named Tamagon, attacking the Devil's World, navigating through Pac-Man-style mazes with crucifixes and power-ups that give the player the ability to breathe fire and eat the dots. The object of the game is to clear the maze of dots and obtain four Bibles to place onto a seal. The devil on the top of the screen commands a pair of demons to control how the world moves, and if Tamagon is caught between the edge of the maze and the wall, he is squished to death. 